paid money to make money? I do not know, but it sure beats saving $100 a month, which actually starts out as $150 because it's after-tax income for 40 years, earning low interest. And again, you're taxed on the interest. That is not too intelligent. It may be safe, but it's not smart. A few years later, as the Phoenix real estate market strengthened, those houses that were sold for $60,000 became worth $110,000. Foreclosure opportunities were still available, but became rare. It cost a valuable asset my time to go out looking for them. Thousands of buyers were looking for the new available deals. The market had changed. It was time to move on and look for other opportunities to put in the asset column. You can't do that here. That is against the law. You're lying. I hear those comments much more often than, can you show me how to do that? The math is simple. You do not need algebra or calculus. And the escrow company handles the legal transaction and the servicing of the payments. I have no roofs to fix or toilets to unplug because the owners do that. It's their house. Occasionally someone does not pay. And that is wonderful because there are late fees and they move out and the property is sold again. The court system handles that. And it may not work in your area. The market conditions may be different, but the example illustrates how a simple financial process can create hundreds of thousands of dollars with little money and low risk. It is an example of money being only an agreement. Anyone with a high school education can do it, yet most people won't. People listen to the standard advice of work hard and save money. For about 30 hours of work, approximately 190000 was created in the asset column and no taxes were paid. Which one sounds harder to you? Number one, work hard, pay 50% in taxes, save what is left, your savings earn 5%, which is also taxed, or take time to develop your financial intelligence, harness the power of your brain and the asset column. If you use option number one, be sure to factor in how much time it takes you to save 190,000. Time is one of your greatest assets. Now you may understand why I silently shake my head when I hear parents say, my child is doing well in school and receiving a good education. It may be good, but is it adequate? I know the above investment strategy is a small one. It is used to illustrate how small can grow into big. Again, my success reflects the importance of a strong financial, ed financial foundation, which starts with a strong financial education. I have said it before, but it's worth repeating. Financial intelligence is made up of these four main technical skills. Number one, accounting. Accounting is the financial literacy or the ability to read numbers. This is a vital skill if you want to build businesses or investments. Number two, investing. Investing is the science of making the money-making money. Number three, understanding markets. Understanding markets is the science of supply and demand. Alexander Graham Bell gave the market when it wanted. So did Bill Gates, a $75,000 house offered for $60,000 that cost $20,000 was also the result of seizing an opportunity created by the market. Somebody was buying and someone was selling. Number four, the law. The law is the awareness of accounting, corporate, state, and federal regulations. I recommend playing by all the rules. In this basic foundation or the combination of these skills, that is needed to be successful in the pursuit of wealth whether it be through the buying of small homes, apartment buildings, company stocks, bonds, precious metals, baseball cards, or the like. A few years later, the real estate market rebounded and everyone else was getting in. The stock market was booming and everyone was getting in. The U.S. economy was getting back on its feet. I began selling and now traveling to Peru, Norway, Malaysia, and the Philippines. The investment landscape had changed. We were no longer buying real estate. Now it, I just watched the values climb inside the asset column and will probably begin selling. I suspect that some of these those little house deals will sell and the $40,000 note will be the converted to cash. I need to call my account to be prepared for cash and seek ways to shelter it. The point I would like to make is that investments come and go. The market goes up and comes down. Economies improve and crash. The world is always handling you, always handing you opportunities of a lifetime every day of your life, but all too often we fail to see them. But they are there. And the more the world changes and the more technology changes, 
the more opportunities there will be to allow you and your family to be financially secure for generations to come. So why bother developing your financial intelligence? Again, only you can answer that. I know why I continue to learn and develop. I do it because I know there are changes coming. I'd rather welcome change than cling to the past. I know there will be market booms and market crashes. I want to continue to develop my financial intelligence because at each market change, some people will be on their knees begging for their jobs. Others, meanwhile, will take the lemons that life hands them, and we all, we all handed lemons occasionally, and turn them into millions. That's financial intelligence. I am often asked about the lemons I have turned into millions. I hesitate using many more examples of personal investments because I'm afraid it comes across as bragging or tooting my own horn. That is not my intention. I use the examples as a numerical and chronological illustration of actual and simple cases. I use the examples because I want you to know that it is easy. And the more familiar you become with the four pillars of financial intelligence, the easier it becomes. Personally, I use two main vehicles to achieve financial growth, real estate and small cap stocks. I use real estate as my foundation. Day in and day out, my properties provide cash flow and occasional spurts of growth and value. The small cap stocks are used for fast growth. I do not recommend anything that I do. The examples are just that, examples. If the opportunity is too complex, I do not understand the investment, I don't do it. Simple math and common sense are all you need to do well financially. These are, there are five reasons for using examples. Number one, to inspire people to learn more. Number two, to let people know it is easy if the foundation is strong. Number three, to show that anyone can achieve great wealth. Number four, to show that there are millions of ways to achieve your goals. Number five, to show that it's not rocket science. In 1989, I used, I used to jog through a lovely neighborhood in Portland, Oregon. Go, go Oregon. It was a suburb that had little gingerbread houses. They were small and cute. I almost expected to see Little Red Riding Hood skipping down the sidewalk on our way to Granny's. There were for sale signs everywhere. The timber market was terrible. The stock market had just crashed and the economy was depressed. On one street, I noticed a for sale sign that was up longer than most. It looked old. Jogging past it one day, I ran into the owner who looked troubled. What are you asking for your house? I asked. The owner turned and smiled weakly. Make me an offer, he said. It's been for sale for over a year. Nobody even comes by anymore to look at it. I'll look, I said, and I bought the house a half hour later for $20,000 less than his asking price. It was a cute little two-bedroom home with gingerbread trim on all the windows. It was light blue with gray accents and had been built in the 1930s. Inside, there was a beautiful rock fireplace as well as two tiny bedrooms. It was a perfect rental house. I gave the owner $5,000 down for a $45,000 house that was really worth $65,000, except that no one wanted to buy it. The owner moved out in a week, happy to be free, and my first tenant moved in, a local college professor. After the mortgage, expenses, and management fee were paid, I put a little less than $40 into my pocket at the end of the month. Hardly exciting. A year later, the, Oregon real, the, the depressed Oregon real estate market had begun to pick up. California investors, flush with money from their still booming real estate market, were moving north and buying up Oregon and Washington. I sold that little house for $95,000 to a young couple from California who thought it was a bargain. My capital gain of approximately $40,000 were placed into a 1031 tax deferred exchange and I went shopping for a place to put my money. In about a month, I found a 12 unit apartment house, uh, apartment house right next to the Intel plant in Beaverton, Oregon. The owners lived in Germany had no idea what the place was worth, and again, just wanted to get out of it. I offered $275,000 for a $450,000 building. They agreed to $300,000. I bought it and held it for two years. Utilizing the same 1031 exchange process, we sold the building for $495,000 and bought a 30-unit apartment building in Phoenix, Arizona. We had moved to Phoenix by then to get out of the rain and needed to sell anyway. Like the former Oregon market, the real estate market in Phoenix was depressed. The price of a 30-unit apartment building in Phoenix was $875,000 with $225,000 down. The cash flow from the 30 units was a little over $5,000 a month. The Arizona market began moving up, and a few years later, a Colorado investor offered us $1.2 million for the property. 
The point of this example is how a small amount can grow into a large amount. Again, it is a matter of understanding financial statements, investment strategies, a sense of the market, and the laws. If people are not versed in these subjects, then obviously they must follow standard dogma, which is to play it safe, diversify, and only invest in secure investments. The problem with secure investments is that they are often sanitized, that is, made so safe that the gains are less. Most large brokerage houses will not touch speculative transactions in order to protect themselves and their clients. And that is a wise policy. The really hot deals are often are not offered to people who are novices. Often the best deals that make the rich even richer are reserved for those who understand the game. It is technically illegal to offer prospective deals to someone who is considered not sophisticated, but of course it happens. The more sophisticated I get, the more opportunities come my way. Another case for developing your financial intelligence over a lifetime is simply that your more opportunities are presented to you. And the greater your financial intelligence, the easier it is to tell whether a deal is good. It's your intelligence that can spot a bad deal or make a bad deal good. The more I learn, and there is a lot to learn, the more money I make simply because I gain experience and wisdom as the years go on. I have friends who are playing it safe, working hard at their profession, and failing to gain financial wisdom, which does take time to develop. My overall philosophy is to plant seeds inside my asset column. That is my formula. I start small and plant seeds. Some grow, some don't. Inside our real estate corporation, we have property worth several million dollars. It is our own REIT, Real Estate Investment Trust. The point I'm making is that the most of the, the, those millions started out as little as $5,000 to $10,000 investments. All of those down payments were fortunate to catch a fast rising market and increase tax free. We traded in and out several times over a number of years. We also own a stock portfolio surrounded by a corporation that Kim and I call our personal mutual fund. We have friends who deal specifically with investors like us who have extra money each month to invest. We buy high risk speculative private companies that are just about to go public on the stock exchange in the United States or Canada. An example of how fast gains can be made are $100,000 shares purchased for $0.25 cents each before the company goes public. Six months later, the company is listed and the 100,000 shares now are worth $2 each. If the company is managed well, the price keeps going up and the stock may go to $20 or more per share. There are years when our $25,000 has gone to a million in less than a year. It is not gambling if you know what you're doing. It is gambling if you're just throwing money into a deal and praying. The idea of anything is to use your knowledge, your technical knowledge, wisdom, and love of the game to cut the odds down, to lower the risk. Of course, there is always risk. It is financial intelligence that improves the odds. Thus, what is risky for one person is less risky for someone else. That is the primary reason I constantly encourage people to invest more in their financial education than in stocks, real estate, or other markets. The smarter you are, the better chance you have beating the odds. The stock plays I personally invested in were extremely high risk for most people and absolutely not recommended. I have been playing that game since 1979 and have paid more than my share in dues. But, but if you will reread my investments such as these are risk free for most people, you may be able to set your life up differently so that the the Ability to take $25,000 and turn it into $1 million in a, in a year is low risk for you. As stated earlier, nothing I have written is a recommendation. It is only used as an example of what's simple and possible. What I do is small potatoes in the grand scheme of things. Yet for the average individual, a passive income of more than $100,000 a year is nice and not hard to achieve. Depending on the market and how smart you are, it could be done in 5 to 10 years. If you keep your living expenses modest, $100,000 coming in as an additional income is pleasant regardless of what you, whether you work. You can work if you like or take time off if you choose and use the government tax system in your favor rather than against you. My personal basis is real estate. I love real estate because it is stable and slow moving. I keep the base solid. The cash flow is fairly steady and if property properly managed has a good chance of increasing in value. 
The beauty of a solid base of real estate is that it allows me to take greater risk as I do with speculative stocks. If I make great profits in the stock market, I pay my capital gains tax on the gain and then reinvest what's left into real estate, again further securing my asset foundation. A last word on real estate. I have traveled all over the world and taught investing. In every city, I hear people say you cannot buy real estate cheap. That is not my experience. Even in New York or Tokyo or just on the outskirts of, of the city, prime bargains are overlooked by most people. In Singapore, with their high real estate prices, there are still bargains to be found within a short driving distance. So whenever I hear someone say, you can't do that here, pointing at me, I remind them that maybe the real statement is, I don't know how to do that here yet. Great opportunities are not seen with your eyes. They are seen with your mind. Most people never get wealthy simply because they are not trained financially to recognize opportunities right in front of them. I am often asked, how do I start? In the final chapter of this book, I offer 10 steps that I have followed on the road to financial freedom. But always remember to have fun. When you learn the rules and the vocabulary of investing and begin to build your asset column, I think you, you'll find that it's as fun a game as you've ever played. Sometimes you win and sometimes you learn, but have fun. Most people never win because they are more afraid of losing. That is why I found school so silly. In school we learn that mistakes are bad and we are punished for making them. Yet, if you look at the way humans are designed to learn, we learn by making mistakes. We learn to walk by falling down. If we never fall down, we would never walk. The same is true for learning to ride a bike. I still have scars on my knees, but today I can ride a bike without thinking. The same is true for getting rich. Unfortunately, the main reason most people are not rich is because they are terrified of losing. Winners are not afraid of losing, but losers are. Failure is the process of success. People who avoid failure also avoid success. I look at money such I look at money much like my game of tennis. I play hard, make mistakes, correct, make more mistakes, correct, and get better. If I lose the game, I reach across the net, shake my opponent's hand, smile and say, see you next Saturday. There are two kinds of investors. The first and most common type is a person who buys a packaged investment. They call a retail outlet, such as a real estate company, a stockbroker, or a financial planner, and they buy something. It could be a mutual fund, a REIT, a stock, or a bond. It is a clean and simple way of investing. An analogy would be a shopper who goes to the computer store and buys a computer right off the shelf. The second type of investor who creates investments. The investor usually assembles a deal in the same way a person who buys components builds a computer. I do not know the first thing about putting components of a computer together, but I do know how to put pieces of opportunities together or know how people know people who know how. It is the second type of investor who is the more professional investor. Sometimes it may take years for all the pieces to come together, and sometimes they never do. It's the second type of investor that my rich dad encouraged me to be. It is important to learn how to put the pieces together because that is where the huge wins reside and sometimes some huge losses if the tide goes against you. If you want to be the second type of investor, you need to develop three main skills. Number one, find an opportunity that everyone else missed. You see with your mind what others miss with their eyes. For example, a friend thought this run bought this rundown old house. It was spooky to look at. Everyone wondered why he bought it. What he saw that we did not was that the house came with four extra empty lots. He discovered that after going to the title company, after buying the house, he tore the house down and sold the five lots to a builder for three times what he paid for the entire package. He made $75,000 for two months of work. It's not a lot of money, but it sure beats minimum wage and it's not technically difficult. Number two, raise money. The average person only goes to the bank. The second type of investor needs to know how to raise capital, and there are many ways that don't require a bank. To get started, I learned how to buy houses without a bank. It was a learned skill of raising money more than the houses themselves that was priceless. All too often, I hear people say, the bank won't lend me money, or I don't have the money to buy it. If you want to be a type two investor, you need to learn how, how to do that, which stops most people. 
In other words, a majority of people let their lack of money stop them from making money, making a deal. If you can avoid that obstacle, you will be millions ahead of those who, do, who don't learn those skills. There have been many times I have bought a house, a stock, or an apartment building without a penny in the bank. I once bought an apartment house for $1.2 I did what is called tying it up with a written contract between seller and buyer. I then raised a $100,000 deposit, which bought me 90 days to, to raise the rest of the money. Why did I do this? Simply because I knew it was worth it was worth $2 million. I never raised the money. Instead, the person who put up the $100,000 gave me $50,000 for finding the deal, took over my position, and walked away. Total working time, three days. Again, it's what you know more than what you buy. Investing is not buying. It's more a case of knowing. Number three, organize smart people. Intelligent people are those who work with or hire a person who is more intelligent than they are. When you need advice, make sure you choose your advisor wisely. There is a lot to learn, but the rewards can be astronomical. If you do not want to learn those skills, then being a type 1 investor is highly recommended. It is what you know that, that is your greatest wealth. It is what you do not know that is your greatest risk. There is always risk, so learn how to manage risk instead of avoiding it.